Welcome to our Youth Experts Film Production Design panel. We're here with Jan Pascal from Mank, Mark Ricker from Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, David Crank from News of the World, and Barry Robeson from One Night in Miami. Thank you all for being here. Uh, all of your films are period pieces. Uh, so I was wondering, do you have a preference between working on a period piece where you would have to be period accurate, uh, or do you prefer working on contemporary or futuristic pieces where there may be less restraints? Uh, Jan, let's start with you. I love doing period movies. I really love it. I love digging into the details of it all, doing the research, and, and then distilling it to see how we can help tell the story properly. Um, I've jumped to the future right now, and I it's actually harder. <laughs> So I, I would much rather do a historical reenactment. <laughs> yeah, I really, I, I'm the same with Jan on this one. I, I love doing period. I love delving deep into the, uh, into whatever period that uh, I'm involved in, yeah. for sure. Absolutely. I mean, there's something about the research, the research journey, you know, just that experience which is a great jumping off point for any any project most of mine have been periods <laughs> and I, what i would do is something to, well you know what I'm a, yeah you know what i'm a reader and i yeah. love history you know and so i just i just can't get enough yeah. of it you know and i just it well, there's a chance to kind of go and, and create i mean all of them you get to create another world but it really this is something you get to create a much kind of bigger world which is usually quite interesting from our standpoint. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like whenever I talk to production designers, you guys always bring up the research and how much you love it. So I, I assume like, like the peer pieces, there is data out there for you to look at as opposed to like futuristic stuff where you can let your imaginations run wild. So you, you all love research? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, just, uh, <laughs> I guess we're all nerds. <laughs> Library nerds. So. <laughs> I tend to listen to the music of the period that I'm doing too, for some reason. I don't know, I just end up doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's subconscious, but it kind of helps me think it through. Yeah, and on, on, uh, on one night in Miami, uh, I went to uh, Life magazines mostly. That was that was super important for us, yes. getting, getting those Kodachrome images. You know, and then going back and, and uh, really delving into that. That was really super important, you know. But I've done other period films where, you know, uh, you know, you just get get deep into the uh, into the historical detail. Mm -hmm. The music is great. There, we we had a set on Ma Rainey where we had a patrol in the corner, and I didn't. No, Karen O'Hara probably did this, but. I just went over and wound it up and there was an album on it and I just dropped the needle while we were prepping the set and everybody and it just sort of, you know, brought the whole place to life in a way. That, similarly to our age. Uh, how closely do you guys work uh, yeah. with actors? Uh, do you, I, I guess it varies from film to film, but do you do like when the actors want to look the set before they start filming or uh, do you like working with them when they're just like, you know, they just come on and want to be surprised. No, on uh, One Night in Miami, Regina really wanted to work with the actors on, on a finished set. And so um, we had to rush to get it finished. So she had, you know, about a week, less than a week with her actors on the set. And during that time, that's when we, um, Andy Riker and I started putting camera ports you know, into walls and um, you know, making sure that the camera was never, you know, in the room with the actors when Regina wanted it only as a speaker actress. And there were a number of times where uh, the, the camera was never in the room with the actors. It was the actors alone in the room, Regina hiding off to one side. But it was, uh, it was pretty interesting watching watching uh, an actor direct actors and her relationship to those actors was pretty amazing, pretty amazing. I like to engage with an actor. If, if the actor is playing a character where we're in a space that their character would have um, 
you know, influence the, the thing, just to have a conversation to see if they've got any ideas about color or art or, or, or anything like that, um, you know, um, or to introduce, when I did Julie and Julie, I learned, I, I like to sort of walk Meryl through the sets beforehand, just to make sure she was comfortable with heights of things, which she, you know, it's just so, I mean, you just, you, you don't want them to be upset when they show up. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I've learned that a little bit through the years. <laughs> We, we had a thing on News of the World that we had to do. It was about 15 or 16 newspapers. And I remember talking to Paul. He was very, very specific about what he wanted to do. Went through many versions of it. But I, I said to him, I said, you know, you can't read any of these things. The print is like, you know, watching angels dance on a pinhead. I mean, I don't know how they read these things. And I said, are you going to want them kind of slightly larger? He goes, no, no, I'm just thinking right And I watched the first night and... Tom, I guess, came up and saying, we pull the magnifying glass out and reads them all with a magnifying glass and stands up and tells the story. And I was like, it was the perfect solution. So I was like, you know, that was, and he didn't say it. I mean, maybe he said something to the prop guy. I don't know. He didn't say it to me, but I was I was kind of, I wanted to see how he read them the first time. I thought, I can't see anything. To say. <laughs> That's why he's an actor. He can come up. <laughs> I got paid more than me. <laughs> Yeah, I've had it go both ways with this. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it can be. Um, I've had it go both ways as well. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> was <laughs> Gary was amazing. Yeah. But, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what do, you, what do you guys do when you have a designer's block where you just like can't crack a, the look of something or like a certain set, uh, Mark? Mm. Oh, you know, sometimes I just just walk away from it, um, take a walk around the block or um, do some more research. I mean, you know, it's, it, it depends on what the block is. Um, sometimes it's like three three walks around the block. <laughs> um, I don't know. Eventually it, it, it comes. I also think we had on, on News of War because we were, we were shooting in continuity and the schedule changed twice a Many times, if you had to, you know, suddenly it's like, well, you've got to find new locations for this, 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 and this by tomorrow. And I was kind of like, oh, thank heavens, we get a second chance at this because the first ones weren't very good. So <laughs> everybody's in the car, like, no, I think this is great. And you always end up finding something better the second go around. So it's like, I think one day I had to be on set at seven and we chose five locations and I got on an airplane at 12. It's kind of like, well, oh, this is the way to work. It's just like, <laughs> And they were all fine, and they, you know they really were kind of better than the first ones we come up with. And you've you've got all that experience of having shot half the movie, of what the thing needs to be now. You know, instead of something you chose two months before. So I always kind of think that's a, kind of a blessing somehow you get to choose something new. Yeah, I mean sometimes you just find that one piece that just is the key, and it unlocks the rest yeah. of it. You know, it just tells you what it should be. Yeah. I know that sounds crazy, but I walk around the block a lot too, Mark. <laughs> We've all but, done that. <laughs> yeah, walk around that block with you. <laughs> I had a director once tell me that you just have to go you know, back to rereading the scene until you understand the scene. And once you understand exactly what that scene is, it will design itself for you. That's exactly what I was going to yeah. say. So I mean, that's, that's the other. It's, but it's taken a step away from it. You know? So you. true. Yeah. Go back to the basics. Go back to the so script. Cool. The script will the script will help you find your way. Yeah. Hopefully. Did you each have something like what Jan was talking about where you just found something like one one item that just unlocked everything for you on each of your films this time? Or maybe on a, a past project you can think of? For us, for this one it was beds. Gary was constantly in bed. So finding the right, he was in bed in one place, he was in a hospital bed. It, you know, it seems like there's one thing per show. You know, sometimes it's bathrooms and sometimes it's, you know, you're doing toilets all day long. But for us, it was bad. <laughs> we yeah, well, on, um, and on one night in Miami, it was the motel room. I mean, right? that was a real, that was, a, you know, a real sense of discovery for the director and the DP when they realized how small <laughs> The room was, you know, and then it got a little bit bigger, and then, oh, and then we came up with the idea that there's an adjoining room, and you know, and it, it was just, it's a, it was a gross problem. Uh,
project as opposed to sort of, hey, here it is, boom, 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 it all came together, you know, in a flash. And Miami was a real learning process for us all. You know, it's interesting for me on Mon Rainey, it was, um, I had the, the unusual opposite experience. I mean, that is what you're describing very typical, but with me, with that band room that we, I discussed with Joyce earlier, which was so small, my inclination was to have it larger. I was gonna have something with depth and all of these corners and all of this room to move around because we were in there for so long and George was the one who wanted it. We, we had flats that he just kept walking in. We did sort of a model study similar to on the floor. He just kept bringing them in and bringing them in and I kept looking at Tobias. And eventually that room was very small, but I thought, I, I hope he knows what he's doing, but um, <laughs> it, it, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a, the opposite of what you know I'm used to doing. So um, going through that experience was fantastic because it just opened my eyes to, there's not just one way, you know, or not just the way that you're used to doing it. So it was a real partnership between you and Tobias. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. I haven't worked with Tobias in years, but uh, yeah, Tobias is wonderful. I kind of forgotten what the question was. <laughs> was there anything on, on this film that like, kind of unlocked anything for you once you found it? Uh, no, I mean, it, yeah, I can't really think of a big thing. I think with the rooms, I remember on the on the master at the very end, there was one scene that was supposed to be in, a, in a, an apartment with the girl that he ends up with, and that. That room, by the time we finished, it was the same thing. He kept making it smaller. It literally, you couldn't walk, the bed filled the entire room up. There was like nowhere around it. And he shot it and looked great. <laughs> it was kind of like, we started the same way, bigger and bigger and got smaller. But the theme of this is just beds and rooms. <laughs> there, was, it just, there was no room at all. You had to crawl into the room. <laughs> but it worked fine. Well, you, got, you know, you guys, you know, I, 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 I talked to Joyce uh, earlier a few months ago because I did a, uh, uh, a television project called Snowpiercer. And as a designer, it was really complicated because no set could be wider than 12 feet wide or longer than 40 feet. And so putting in, uh, trying to come up with uh, different ideas for 1,001 <laughs> cars was amazing. But what it taught me, uh, you know, as a designer, um, how much uh, visual information you can put in to a very, very small space. Mm. You know, and sometimes it was it was removal as opposed to addition. And to me, uh, I think that ultimately helped inform One Night in Miami. You know, because I had learned those lessons in Snowpiercer. You know, and was able to bring some of that into. One night in Miami. It was a real, it was fascinating. It's still fascinating. Yeah. That's that's amazing. And Barry, I heard you talking about doing two wall sets and three wall sets, and we did a lot of that as well, while mm -hmm. also trying to get the depth that was used on Citizen Kane. You know, something similar. So mm -hmm. you could you could shoot down the long hallway, but it, going off the rooms of the hallway was just a little return wall. So that's right. it's it's an interesting combination of how you do it, you know, but, but the tricks, the tricks that Don used were just right, just absolutely appropriate. You know, it was just stacked walls to show the depth and, and you didn't need the side walls. Mm -hmm. It's right. pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah, um, probably very exciting. I think when you do have to do something that tiny, because I think even on Knives Out, the, the room, Christopher Plummer's office, I mean, the director told me he wanted it, and I was like, he's never going to want something that small. It wasn't even the size of my office. Oh, it was like the attic. He goes, oh, this is good. I was like, okay. But, you know, it's just we planned it out, and it, it looks kind of huge. And it was like 8 by 11 or something. It was tiny. Wow. It looked so great. <laughs> it depends on, you know, it's, it's usually kind of exciting when you're forced to have to kind of crunch it down somehow. I'm in agreement. I love it. Those are, those are challenges that yeah. we all want. We all want to do yeah. it, because it just shows all of our ability, you yeah. know. You know at its, exactly. at its, so anyone can design a big room. <laughs> yeah, anyone can design a big room. <laughs> it's true. 
Uh, well, lastly, do you do you guys remember the first time you were really awestruck by a set in a film? Like maybe when you were a kid and you're watching something and it just like stayed in your mind. You could think about it for a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure it was a sound of music for me somewhere. <laughs> That's something I saw as a child. <laughs> Might have been Camelot when I was little. <laughs> You know, it's just in my head is Close Encounters for some reason. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. That's I wasn't good. little by then. That was a problem. What's that? I wasn't young by then. I was, I was <laughs> that young. I didn't have the same impact on you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, uh, all of you guys, for being here today. It was great speaking with you. Congratulations on all your films and have a great day.